Volkia. If I move my stick, my cyclic state to the left, I'm using a spring stick in real life. And in the Apache as well, there are magnetic brakes which will make it want to return back to the center. So the further I'm pushing away from its center, the more it's going to resist that motion. So that is where the force trim up hold mode comes in, or rather the force trim hold up, or the force trim release. Some other helicopters, this is called a trim button, and essentially, unlike a jet, where you beep the trim, a little bit up, a little bit left, that kind of thing, in this case, I'm going to move the psychic to a new position, relatively to the left, and then I tap force trim up, and I'll see that little red X behind it has jumped to the diamond. That means that in the sim, in the game, that is the new stick center position. So it's not necessarily reflective of where my real life HOTAS stick is. In this case, my real life HOTAS stick is centered pretty much back here right now. So that's why the control indicators, at least while you're learning, still useful in the terms of you knowing where your stick is and the fact that I don't have any authority to go fully 100% pitch forward in terms of the psychic anymore, you know, push it fully forwards. I can only do about, you know, 55% forward still. And if I really wish to go fully back psychic, I'd have to yank my stick back, trim halfway, because that would be 100% of my real life stick's deflection, and then have to do it again. But you don't need to. Now, there is no trim reset button if you were to go on the ground. I mean, the general practice is just that you center it to what it needs to be for hovering flight or ground position and you trim it there again, like the real pilots would. And typically, if you're not doing a running landing, if you're stopping in a harbor just above the point where you would land, if you trimmed while you were in that position, you would already be in the correct trim position to just take off again. So there's no need for a reset in that sense. It's a convenience, but doesn't exist on the real thing. Yeah. So there are a few things about this trim. I, up till now, have been tapping trim, which is the way I recommend. Now you can also hold trim, meaning I'm going to push in, force trim hold up, and now maneuver. And you'll see it gets a little more squirrely. Now, it's, while it's still supposed to have SCAS and SAS, you know, so augmenting your flight, things like the turn coordinator and some other elements go off while you're holding it in. Now, just an example. I'm going to do some crazy flight. If I now bank left and right, crazy like. Okay. No need for you to do this. This obviously disrupts your flight path and makes things a little wobbly. But right, you can see what it did. But my pitch roughly stayed the same. Well, roughly. If I were now to hold down force trim release while doing that, you'll see my pitch changes. Oh, that last turn was quite violent. But my pitch changes quite a bit while doing this. So that's a general thing. If you're going to be holding down force trim release, your airframe is going to be harder to control, and a bit more squirrely. So for now, I recommend, especially while you're learning, don't hold on force trim release. Just move your stick and pedals into the position you want, then tap force trim release, or force trim hold up, and that's it. Now, there are a few modes that you should know about how you could trim. In this case, I was using instant, or force feedback friendly trim. So what that means is I move my stick into the new position, or my other controls. Once I'm happy with it, I tap force trim release, and then I'm within half a second, I release my controls so that they can snap back to center. Now you would have seen a little bit of a jerk there, because what happens is if you don't do it quite in time, and if your stick doesn't center within that time, it's going to have a compound effect. So just now I'm gonna drag my cyclic off to the right there, I'm going to trim somewhere over here, but I'm not going to let go of my cyclic. What's going to happen is the X is going to jump here, as in-game, the Apache stick down there has now settled itself to, you know, somewhere 30% to the right. And if I'm still holding in my real-world stick, at the same time, it's now compounding the new in-game Apache center position there with my input and make it doubly as effective. 
So as an example, it's going to happen fast. And there you saw it. For a moment, I went to an extreme bank and I'm almost irrecoverable. No, not almost. That is instant trouble. You just need to release it in time, otherwise you will have a compound effect. Now, in your main menu, if you go to your options, you need to go to miscellaneous and you need to untick force feedback. If this is ticked while you're not using force feedback, you're gonna find that it does some funny things with your controls, some random inexplicable bugs now and then. So untick this, which I believe is on by default in DCS, untick it if you're not using a force feedback stick. Now I'm gonna go in the special menu and I'm gonna look for the AH64. Here you'll see under my cyclic trimmer mode, I've got instant trim force feedback friendly. If you were using a force feedback stick, like a Microsoft Sidewinder or one of those, maybe a Brunner, you want on the miscellaneous options, you want that force feedback ticked and you'll probably wanna use this option. Now remember I said you need to leave your stick within half a second. In a force feedback stick, it is holding that position of your stick mechanically once you trim. So that in-game simulation was doing with the magnetic brakes, it's doing in real life on your stick with gears and mechanical components. So in that case, once you trim, it's telling the mechanical stick to hold your position there. And well, if you release it, it's gonna stay in that position. So this also works for force feedback devices, provided you've got the miscellaneous force feedback tick. Central position trimmer is another option if you're doing spring sticks, okay? So between instant trim and central position trimmer, it's a personal choice. Central position trimmer just means that you move your cycling into position, you press trim. At that moment in time, it will disable your controls. You can move your joystick around however you want. It's not going to respond to any more inputs until you move your joystick back to center. Once you've moved it back to center, it then applies that trim at that moment. So you no longer have this rush to release your stick and your controls within a half second to make it snap back to center. But it does have a few other downsides of if you don't return your stick to center soon enough, you'll find that you don't have any controls for a while. If you've got a vibration or movement in your stick, you know, that's not part of you, it's just the sensors not being so great, and you didn't put dead zones around that, you might also find you've got issues returning it to center. It's not gonna register that it is centered and relinquish control back to you after applying the trim. So between central position trimmer mode and instant trim, it's up to you which one you're used to and which one you prefer when you're dealing with spring sticks. The final option is joysticks without springs and force feedback. So that would be if you've got a stick where you've maybe just got some dampeners on it, no springs returning to center, and there's no mechanical or magnetic device holding your stick in place. So almost the stick can, depending on the, how hard the dampeners are, it can almost flop around. So for that, you'd want that. You'll see with the pedals, you also have the option. Most pedals you will find also have return to center springs. In my case, uh, it's a bit unique. I've chosen pedals without springs because I've literally ripped the springs out of my pedals and added some dampening to it, some silicon grease. So in that case, if I had it with instant trim or the other options, it would fly crazy because my physical pedals are still being held in position, but the game wants to see it centered back. And that's obviously not gonna happen unless I were to manually center it each time, which would be painful. So those are your trim options. So just again, if you're using force feedback, go into miscellaneous options, tick force feedback, and then over here, you want to be using instant trim force feedback friendly for whichever devices have force feedback. If you're not using force feedback, disable this and then use either instant trim force feedback friendly or central position trimmer mode, depending on your choice and what you're used to. And finally, if you're using things that have don't return to center and aren't mechanically being held in place, then choose joystick without springs and force feedback or pedals without springs and force feedback depending on your situation. 
And finally to recap, if you're flying, I recommend not holding down force trim release, but instead only tapping it when your controls are settled and your aircraft has flown into its attitude that you want. You tap it and you either center or you leave controls depending on your trim method. This is Volk. Join me in the next episode for curves and saturation, which is really important for the Apache module right now. Cheers.